Seriously, the outpouring of love is like nothing I have ever seen, not only in South Africa, but in America. Oprah, Trevor, speak about what that aftermath was like, because it was very special. Not everyone gets it. Was I think my the most beautiful thing about having those these names that you mentioned, um, you know, sharing my message and and congratulating was the fact that all the words that I said on stage were now going to be heard by you know a broader spectrum. So many people were going to hear what I said, and I felt like those messages were so important. And so when your Oprah's, Michelle Obama's, Trevor, Naomi Campbell, when they put those <laughs> in their profiles, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> What is happening? It's such an out of body experience because I mean, I come from South Africa in a very small village. Um, and you know, it's it's incredible and mind blowing that something like this could, could happen to me. And so I was very grateful. I felt gratitude a lot. Well, um, you you just stepped into it like a proper queen. Um, I also wanted to ask you, the year I won, I was crowned by the first woman of color ever to win the pageant. Um, you, when you won, you were lucky enough to have two women of color as Miss, U Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. What was that like for you to come home to maybe a like family? Yeah, that was that was such an incredible moment. It was very special because, like you said, when you won, you were crowned by the first ever woman of color to win Miss Universe. And so when I won Miss Universe and I had, you know, these two black women next to me, it was like you can see a change, you know, from a long time ago to now, because now it was like saying you don't have to have one woman of color or one black woman doing this, but you can have three, you can have more, you know, women of color at the table doing incredible things. And so that was truly, truly special to me. And I loved having them here with me and sharing those moments with them and just trying to get rid of the tokenism, you know, cause there's so much tokenism around um, women, especially black women. It's like, okay, if we have just one, we're okay, we're fine, we don't need any more. But then there were like three of us there, very strong, intelligent, beautiful women. And so I was very happy to be a part of that, you know, trio. Um, you are incredibly eloquent as witnessed here in this interview. Um, I was wondering how your family formed you or what were the lessons that they gave you so that you could manifest as this incredible, uh, eloquent woman we see before us? Um, my goodness, my family has played a huge, huge role in who I am today. Uh, my mom is a school principal. Um, so growing up, she was a school teacher and always made sure, you know, to instill education in us and, and um, just to make sure that we, we took care of ourselves intellectually because she knew she was going to be sending out there, us out there into the world. And so she just always was preparing us for the world. Um, my dad is very big on education as well. I mean, he works for the Department of Higher Education and Training back home. So it's like, and they've just always known. Um, my grandmother as well played a huge role in informing who I am because I remember the first book I ever read um, was Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. And I, it was gifted to me by my grandmother because she used to read a lot, which was so surprising and beautiful to me because she never even got a chance to further her stud studies or, or you know, be educated, but she could read. And so it was such an incredible thing for me to sit on her lap and we used to, you know, read books together when she read, I was so interested in what she was doing. Um, and so she was like, you know what, I'm just gonna give you this book. And I think just having that background has always made me curious and want to know more about the world. And in turn, it just shaped, you know, who I, I became as a woman. Beauty queens and beauty pageants have often been the butt of jokes, even today, despite the huge popularity. As a very intelligent woman, how do you counter that argument? And what made you want to enter the pageant rather than go and do something else? 
Yeah, I think the best way to counter the argument is to just be myself um, and do the best that I can. Because, you know, it's one thing trying to convince people with words, you know, beauty, beauty queens are not this, they're not that. I must just live it. I must just be it. Um, and they must just see it, you know, from me. I think that's how I've just been tackling that by just, um, you know, being myself through and through and making sure that they see, um, you know, the, the honesty and, and everything else that is coming from me. Um, you had a two part question. Why, why did you enter? Um, I entered because I've, I've seen women come onto this platform and I've seen them do such incredible things. You win Miss Universe and you get this huge following and people listen to you. They want to know what you want to say. And I've always known that I had a voice, um, you know, to fight for so many social ills, to, um, you know, to just uh, bring positive impact into the world. And I thought this was the best way to do it because I know there's not a lot of platforms in the world that give women an opportunity to be at the forefront and to lead. And for me, Miss South Africa and Miss Universe was those platforms. I saw it as a tool for leadership. I saw it as a tool to extend my voice and to help out where I can um, as much as I could. So that's the reason why I entered because for me, it was a leadership position that I could take up and do the things that I wanted to do with it. So you win and you start your year and then yes. suddenly COVID happens mm -hmm. and you're in New York, which was the epicenter of COVID for America for a long time. Where were you when you heard that you were going into lockdown and what was that like for you that, that time? Yeah, it's so interesting because I was in Indonesia uh, when I heard that the whole world and New York and everyone was going to be going into shutdown. And I remember having that trip to return to New York and making sure that when they locked down, I would be, you know, back in New York. So I came back to New York from Indonesia. And um, I think a few days later, we were on total shutdown. Um, so it was... <sighs> I mean, at first, I didn't think much about it because the whole world was going through it. And I think we were all still trying to understand what this thing is. And we, we didn't know how to manage it or what was happening. Um, but then I, I realized that it meant, you know, no traveling. You would be in your apartment. And so then how would I do my job, you know, as a Miss Universe? Because a huge part of it is um, the traveling aspect of it. So I didn't take it quite well at first, but um, I quickly adjusted. I mean, as soon as my feet found the ground, I was up and running again. So what did, it do? What did you do? Were you able to do Zoom calls? How did it, how did yeah. it manifest? So when that happened, we quickly had to come together as the team, the Miss Universe team, and we were like, we have to, you know, find a way to navigate in this new life. And so we created the um, hashtag Universe United platform. Um, during the time, a lot of people were home and they were just going through a lot. And I felt, let's just open this platform where we could say, let's be together while we're being apart. Let's share, you know, our stories, share what we're going through just to open, you know, this, this nice community of safety. Um, so that's how that started, but it soon quickly became, you know, something else, something that was not just fun, but educational, because then I would host a lot of different people on my IG live. So I brought in people, you know, like psychologists, because we needed psychologists during this time. I brought in medical doctors. We had activists coming in, women from, you know, UN women, There's just so many different powerful people from across the world that I brought onto this platform to not only, you know, have fun with us, but to educate us. And so that's how I quickly found uh, my voice again. It was through social media. It was through, you know, platforms like Zoom and like just so many ways that we could do it virtually. We did all of that.